afshen this is s k m d k back with another video so if you already watched my samsung galaxy z fold 2 5g review linked over here you would recall that i said i'm going to start a series of videos titled deep dive on the samsung galaxy z fold 2 5g and actually i also said that the first video of that series would be a deep dive on the camera now after recording the review video i realized that the one ui 3.0 update has already been released so i've decided to change it up a bit and have the first episode of a deep dive be a deep dive on the changes in one ui 3.0 specifically on the galaxy z fold 2 5g so rather than a deep dive on the camera this will be a deep dive on the samsung galaxy z fold 2 5g one ui 3.0 update so without wasting any time let's get right into it so before we go on i want to first say thanks to my returning subscribers i really appreciate your support and if you haven't subscribed yet please consider joining the team by subscribing and clicking the bell icon this motivates me to keep on pushing content and ensures that you'll be among the first to see the upload when I upload my videos. So I've decided to break down this video in three segments. Firstly, an overall view of the changes on the UI. Secondly, changes in features, including the names and location, as well as then the new features in the update. Starting with the overall UI experience. The UI feels smooth, as well as some smooth animations. The drop-down notification page has been heavily revamped, adopting a visually appealing transparent blur background, as well as a better organization of the notifications. At the top, you have your media controls for your sort of music apps like YouTube Music. Followed by that is conversational notifications like messages, WhatsApp messages, then followed by alert notifications, and then finally silent notifications. I believe this is a great arrangement of the notifications because it puts what's important to you first. Dropping down for the notification page takes you to the quick settings, which now has sort of two panels at the top. The first one being devices, which allows you to quickly see your connected devices as well as smart, smart things devices. Also included is an extra option to allow you to change this device panel even when your phone is locked. Next to the devices panel is the media panel which similar to devices panel, allows you to control your media, including music share, mirroring, as well as the device's volume. There's also an extra option to allow for app shortcuts, which will allow for quicker access to your media apps. Then similar also to devices panel, there's an option to allow you to control your media even when your device is locked. There's also a new animation when you're navigating through your recent apps as well as a new volume bar, which includes vertical bars. Throughout the UI, the sort of transparent look is present throughout. Now let's look at the changes in features, including their names and locations. Let's start with the notification settings. The MEA seems to have been to house all settings related to notifications under one place, allowing for better control. There's also different pop-up notification styles now. Firstly, a brief one, then secondly, a detailed one. Synonymous with the name, the brief one allows for a smaller sort of pop-up notification, while the detailed one allows for a bigger notification pop-up, as well as one that includes the contents of the notification. The brief pop-up has extra settings. Really, this is similar to the edge lighting settings, allowing for different animations and different colors. There's also an extra option to allow for the color to be changed automatically based on a keyword. This is great if you want to quickly recognize notifications from your significant other. As I said, the aim seems to have been to house all notifications under one place. There's advanced settings, which include settings that were previously in other location, as well as other new settings. Notification history allows you to be able to view notifications that you have previously dismissed. 
There's also floating notifications, which allows for two options, bubbles as well as smart pop-up view. Bubbles being similar to the sort of messenger-like notification bubbles, while smart pop-up view is similar to the multi-windows pop-ups, you would need to select which apps you want to support the smart pop-up view. The suggest actions and replies to notification has been moved over here, including notification reminders and wireless emergency alerts. On to the battery settings. This is now under battery and device care and not just device care. The battery usage stats UI has been changed, including information of how long does your battery typically last. Swiping to the right gives you information of your battery usage in the past seven days, as well as what on average is your usage. Maximum power saving mode seems to have been changed to limit apps and home screen in the power saving mode. Under more battery settings, the high performance setting has been changed to enhance processing. Going back to the device care menu, you'll notice now that there's an automation setting on the three dot settings, which now you'll see that the auto optimization has been changed to auto optimize daily, as well as now an addition of adaptive power saving, which learns your usage patterns and then sets the power saving mode optimally based on how you use your device. Now on to the new features. There's now also a temporary mute setting when you change your sound setting to mute. This comes in handy when you know that you just need your device to be on mute for a specific period, especially for example if you go into a meeting. This ensures that you don't end up staying locked on mute and then missing alerts. There's now also call background, which allows you to change the background. There's also a double tap to sleep, but this only works when you're on the home screen. There's also lock screen widgets, which allows you to put your favorite app's controls at a glance. In the camera app, the settings to keep setting allows for now more settings to be kept the same even after closing your camera app. The photo editor on the phone allows you now to revert back to the original picture even after making your edits. This comes in handy because when you save your picture, your original picture gets removed. However, there's still a way to just save a copy of the edited version to then keep the original version also. There's now also better control for app permissions, only allowing an app to have access to that information or feature only at that time, meaning that the app will need to then ask for permission once again if it needs to use that sort of feature or information. The Messages app now keep a history of deleted messages, keeping them in the recycle bin for about 15 days. This is great in case you mistakenly delete a message. You can of course also empty the recycle bin, allowing you to keep you safe from those nosy people who would be searching your phone even to the recycle bin. There's now an option to add an eSIM in the SIM card manager. However, I've struggled to add one myself, but I believe I still need to just talk to my mobile network operator. Under the developer settings, there's now an option to allow you to see the refresh rate as you use your device. Then just as a side note, if you always use notification bar gestures, just like I do, you would notice that after updating to One UI 3.0, they feel less responsive. However, it feels like you just need to go increase the sensitivity of the gestures. If you're using the international version of the Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G, specifically the model number SMF91B, then you can also update to Android 11 with One UI 3.0. I'll include a link in the description below to an XDA thread that guides you on how to install this update. I have to say though, do this at your own risk. If you're not comfortable, then it's better to rather wait for the update to reach your phone and then update over the A. So that's it friends, that was my deep dive on the One UI 3.0 update. Thanks for making it this far, I really appreciate your support. If you like this video or you found it helpful, please smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please also do subscribe. Also, I might have missed some features of the One UI 3.0 update. So if you notice that maybe I missed some feature, please comment below on the comment box because then I would also like to test those features. So until then, 
Thanks for your support. Keep well, and then see you in the next video. Cheers.